G'day there guys, do you like Am I the A-Hole? Cause I like Am I the A-Hole. Let's go, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash, can you guess it, Am I the A-Hole. Now I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn in the barbie and enjoy today's bloody good content. Thank you. Our first post today is by user Panic Boyfriend, titled, Am I the A-Hole for telling my girlfriend I will literally kick her out if she won't see a doctor? I'm honestly out of ideas for how to help my girlfriend, and so maybe I was too harsh today, but I'm losing my mind over this situation. She definitely has a medical issue of some kind. She goes to the walk-in sometimes, but they won't do anything long-term that needs monitoring, so she needs a family doctor. And she's been on a list for over a year, and she does call around occasionally to family doctors, but has not had any luck. But I don't think she's taking her health seriously at all, and I offer to take her to the ER sometimes because seriously, she might die or something and I want this addressed as soon as possible. She is thin and small. She doesn't teach much, but partly, and I can confirm, because she often throws up after having just a few bites of a meal and then feels sick for a while, that kind of knocks her out of the day for a few hours, so she just takes vitamins and occasionally drinks Onsure. Or Ensure, I don't know how to say that. The kind of drink targeted at old people to keep up calories, but she's only 23. And she's weirdly fine with this and says she's always kind of been this way. Which isn't true because we started dating two years ago, and I definitely saw her eat normally at some times in the past. She wakes up in the middle of the night to be sick in the bathroom. Sometimes in the middle of the day, she goes from totally coherent to looking like a drunk person in less than like five minutes and I literally have to force her to drink some juice or something. I'm not a doctor, but I know she needs one like yesterday. I'm not even comfortable with letting her drive anymore because of how spacey she can get out of nowhere. She keeps saying she's on a list and will get a doctor eventually, but I think seriously this is bad. And I know I'm nagging, but it's kind of scary and I don't know what to do at all. Today she got really weak and confused and forgot about lots of things that we were talking about just this morning. And I said I kind of want to call an ambulance, and she told me she's fine and would be mad if I did that. And I'm so upset, I said like, if you're trying to kill yourself, I can't be with you to watch. And seriously, you have to do something or else move out, because I can't do this anymore. You have to get healthy or get out. She's okay physically now, but incredibly angry with me for being insensitive about symptoms she can't help. But I know she can't help it, and that's why I want her to go to the hospital, because what if she has some kind of disease that can use medicine or something? I really don't know. I know medical info is super personal, but I live with her and see this problem every day, and it's really scary, so I kind of think it's my problem too. But maybe I'm overstepping. I really don't know. Is it an a-hole thing to push people on medical topics like this? Maybe I should call her mom, who's in another city but not far, but that also feels kind of dickish, and I don't know how to act right here. I think it's fair that you want her to get a doctor's help. I'm not sure if kicking her out is the best thing to do, but I can understand your decision, and I can stand by it, I guess, if you feel like you have no other options. It really does, from the outside in, seem like a serious situation that's only going to get worse with time, and her not going to a doctor is a cause for concern. I don't really have much to add or say on this one because I have no experience in situations like this, and I do hope that we're able to come to a good conclusion for this one, but for how you've gone about it, I don't think you've been too dickish, and I think calling her mum is a good idea. I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. Edit. Thank you all so much for your stories and encouragement on this situation. It helped me realize that it's worth acting, even if it would make me an a-hole. We messaged her sister really late last night. Girlfriend said it was okay to do, but I'm the one who messaged. And she was still actually awake and said that she has the weekend off and could come stay with us for two days and help if she can. And she got here a few hours ago. She's been really kind to me, honestly like trying to take care of me and telling me to go sit down, and she made me food, and I'm overwhelmed. 
She had a private conversation with my girlfriend, and when they came out, they said they're going to go to the ER, and her sister is somehow doing all of this so easily where I couldn't. And they're at the hospital now, and I'm not. But I think that makes sense because she seems to listen to her sister a lot easier than me, and it's probably best. And I think I'm just exhausted or something. I've never been so stressed in my life, but I'm so thankful to her sister, who seems to know exactly what to say to make everything work. Edit again. For anyone curious, her sister called me, and I guess my girlfriend is more than one ulcers in her stomach, and there could be a reason for it. So they're still at the hospital to try to see why she has them. She had a scope thing and also a biopsy. And that's all I know so far. Not the a-hole. She definitely needs to see a doctor. That isn't normal. However, telling her you would kick her out might be a bit insensitive, but she really needs to see a doctor. And OP replies, I don't really want to kick her out right now, but I am questioning the relationship. I don't know why I even said that, and it's why I'm probably an a-hole. I'm just feeling so lost that I said any words that came into my head at the moment, just trying to push her to do something. Because she isn't accepting your help, part of which is a place to live, then it is right for your own survival and mental health for you to tell her to find somewhere else to live. Not the a-hole. You should be questioning this relationship. She isn't taking care of herself, but demands you cater to her needs, which is impossible. You're not a doctor. Look, you also can't ignore the emotional and mental toll this has on you too. You're literally seeing someone you love wither away, to the point of suffering memory lapse, and they refuse to seek help. This is forcing you to continue to live in the fear of losing her in the worst possible ways you can imagine. While her body her decision, she has no right to cause you such anxiety and continue on her merry way, expecting you to be happy. I'm sorry if I'm coming off a bit harsh towards her, but I've been in your place with a dear family member who refused to get help. I feared for them as much as I loved them, and it wrecked me. Their own self-destructive behavior was destroying me too. I tried to help in every way I could think of, and at the end I had to use an ultimatum to drill into their heads that it wasn't okay. I left. They found out they had cancer eight months later. Can you imagine the horrible taste this left in my mouth as I tried to support them? Can you imagine what would have happened to my mental health for those eight months before they decided to check it out? No one has the right to ask you to watch them die. If they are willingly doing that without seeking help, or at least to find out what's happening, then in my book, that's abuse. Perkle one asks, does she have an eating disorder? And OP replies, I don't know really. I don't think so though. She seems to try to maintain her weight with supplements, like calories and protein drinks, and stuff like that, but as I've said, it's sort of weird, and I don't really know what's going on, so I want to go to a doctor, maybe even together if she will ever agree to it. It could also be irritable bowel syndrome, or an IBD like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, that can make you lose weight, have stomach upset, feel ill, be malnourished or not want to eat, etc. My ex with diagnosed Crohn's drank so many insures when he was in a flare-up. So many. And our last comment by Wrench48 says, I was so concerned with my wife's health that I demanded she see a doctor. She continued to refuse. Finally, I told her that if she didn't see a doc, I'd divorce her. That's your choice, she replied. I divorced her. A year later, she was dead. Turns out she was an alcoholic and didn't want to be outed. She traded her marriage and her life for all this. It's not rational, but if they don't want to go, you cannot make them go. Prepare yourself. And now on to the update. In summary, my girlfriend was constantly sick, dizzy, and confused. I was getting angry at her about it because she refused to get help and it caused us to fight. It's been a long time since that post, but I received so much support and kindness from it that I wanted to give an update to anyone who may like to know what happened in the end. After many days and long nights in the ER, with referral promises that never came to be, 
My girlfriend finally got a referral to some kind of diagnostic clinic that works with difficult problems. The early hospital visits were enough to know that she had ulcers, but she was still sick even after they were seemingly healed. So they did more tests and more ER visits. Sometimes all they could do was hydrate her. She is constantly dehydrated and tell her she needs to take stronger vitamins because she's always mildly deficient in a few. The diagnostic clinic ran an F-ton of blood tests looking for every possible thing. Like three blood tests a week. She must have been screened for every disease in existence. They found some mild liver dysfunction. Sorry if I report this incorrectly, but she doesn't process bilirubin correctly, as far as I understand it, and that is an important liver thing. After that, they still tested her for every gastro and liver disease under the sun, and it looks like she has a genetic thing that sometimes, but not always, causes stomach pain and puking. They basically told her that it sucks, but isn't life-threatening, and all she can do is avoid putting stress on the body, so she has actually gotten much better at sleeping regular hours, and not pushing herself physically, and trying to drink enough water. Or Gatorade, which she now claims to be superior to water, but whatever. It seems to work. She still throws up suddenly if she gets stressed out, but it's much less frequent, and for at least two months, hasn't been getting randomly confused, so that's a good sign. She says now that she has an answer, it's easier to handle, and I'm not really pushing past that because it seems to be working. She isn't angry with me anymore, and said I wasn't wrong to be upset, and she apologized for being difficult. But she said she was initially overwhelmed with never getting answers, and never knowing how to eat or act to make a difference. So she never tried. She seems embarrassed about it now. We had a lot of conversations about how to deal with health issues in the future, and I also apologized and said I'd really try not to lose my temper if she gets sick again, but it will be easier if we talk about it sooner. I think we're on the same page now, and things are way better than before. She even saw the original post, and said that the comments helped her realize that this was actually scary to other people, where she didn't think it was noticeable to others at first. She still said that I was too harsh to lash out at her, as some of you mentioned, and I'd agree. The compromise was to talk about things more often, so neither of us has to feel like worry is building up over time. Thanks to everyone who reached out after the first post with thoughtful responses. It meant a lot, and we might not be totally there yet, but we're making good progress. And in the comments, NakyGirl19 says, Glad you updated. It sucks, but it happens. In high school, everyone was convinced I had an eating disorder because I rarely ate in front of people, because I would get sick when I ate. I had ulcers, still do. When I get extremely stressed, I can't eat, or if I overeat, I get sick. Let her know that it gets better. You find out what you can deal with and don't, at least for me. And OP replies, yeah, she seems to just know a bit as well. There are times she says, I can't eat right now. I think I need a few hours and I will eat at night. And I used to argue, but also she's usually right and gets sick if she eats when she feels like she can't. Sometimes not though. It's confusing and weird from my perspective, but as long as she's trying to be healthy, I'm happy, and I can let her figure out what works to her. NikkiGirl19 replies, I promise it's not like she wants to do it. It honestly sucks throwing up every time you eat. I did it for a year. Still not sure how I survived. It really became better to not eat, which I seriously get. Another reply says, A fair number of chronic illnesses are actually pretty hard to diagnose. There isn't one specific test or image that can diagnose a lot of things. It can be really hard and depressing to be ill and keep going to doctors and getting tests and getting no answers. So I have a lot of empathy for your girlfriend's situation. I have multiple chronic conditions, and it took almost five years to get diagnosed and get on a drug and lifestyle regime that works. I'm glad she's doing better. One thing that might help her or her doctors in the future, if she's up for it, is to track her symptoms. I use a bullet journal to track my symptoms and what I eat. It helps nail down triggers. There are a ton of apps too. And our last comment by Twirling Barbie says... Sounds a lot like cluster headache. I've been in her shoes. They couldn't find a thing. 
They kept asking me if I was pregnant, and years later, I met someone with similar symptoms going through the same horrible process. She had cluster headaches. Literally only having extra oxygen helps with her. Sometimes doctors can't really find what it is. And OP replies, Yeah, it seems that way. Finding answers is harder than I expected. The vague conclusion we have about what's going on is helpful, but not really, like, definitive. This new fancy clinic was really fast and helpful though, and they have her as a patient now, and told her to come back any time if things get bad again, so it's nice to know we at least have that option open. Yeah, I guess me personally, I have nothing else to add to this, and I feel like the comments summarize this pretty well. I know a lot of people, especially people down in my comments, do suffer from chronic illnesses, and I see those comments, and I feel bad because it's like, I don't, I can't do anything personally besides help you myself through the stories, and giving you an escape from reality for a bit, and that's kind of the point of the channel, it's just, you know, step away from things for a while. I do hope personally that OP's girlfriend is able to find help through these clinics, as that was an awful thing that they were going through, and I'm sure it will continue to happen, and I hope they're able to find solace in some way. Our next post is by user ShannonE3, titled, Would I be the a-hole for confronting my dad about shady bank account activity? So, my parents got divorced a couple years back. My dad had been pretty involved with prostitutes and blew thousands of dollars of family money on this habit. The divorce started out pretty amicable, but when my dad started to realize he was going to lose a lot of his money, he wanted to cut my brother and I off of his health insurance plan take away college money, etc. I was 21 at the time, and my brother 19. My dad was also pretty intensely cyberstalking and physically stalking my mum once she had started to move on. He put a tracker on her car and a key logger on her computer. All of these things. We changed all of her passwords, and then the next day she was locked out of her accounts because my dad had changed them all back. It took lawyers getting involved because of this harassment to get insurance details righted, college money restored, and to get reparations paid back to my mum for all of the prostitute money that he used. I contemplated cutting him out of my life back then, but I just felt terribly guilty about all of it, even though my brother cut off communications. Fast forward to now, and my dad and I have somewhat of a relationship. It's improved a lot since the divorce years, even though I've caught him in a lot of lies and shady behaviour still. However, I recently got married back in May, and my husband and I found out we're expecting a baby due in April. We've been working towards merging our finances, when I get this notification from my bank that the contact phone number on my account had just been changed to my dad's phone number. I just feel so sick. I know he was the one that put that number on my account, which means he's probably yet again doing something shady to access my account. I told my brother about it, and he's livid and ready to confront my dad. And I think I am too. I called my bank about the phone number change, and while they won't give me the IP address the change was made from, they can confirm it was done from a verified login, and it was not myself or my husband. So would I be the a-hole for confronting my dad and possibly cutting off contact? I'm so sick of being locked out of accounts, having my private information screwed with, and at this point, I don't want my future child and family having to deal with all of this harassment and stalking. Kinda weird that you have to question this one. I don't know why you think you'd be an a-hole for that. This guy is obviously breaking the law and destroying whatever relationship he has with you. How is you cutting off uh, contact with him and shutting him down a a-hole thing to do. I'm kind of completely lost for words on this one. I don't know how you've convinced yourself of that, but anyway, here's your reassurance. I would go with not the a-hole. I feel like I don't need to explain any more why that would be. In the comments, not sorry Miss Jackson, ooh, says, not the a-hole in the slightest. Change banks if you can. If you can't, close that account and open a new one. He may already have the account number, and that's a problem. Talk to the bank and see what other security options they offer, rather than phone numbers for two-step verification. Email? A one-word password? 
If you use email, create one for that specific purpose of identifying yourself, and don't use it for anything else. There is no reason for him to be accessing or trying to access your account. You're an adult, and what he is doing is trying to steal or do some other shady crap. And honestly, you shouldn't feel guilty if you want to seize all communication. He has burned those bridges. I live by the fact that you don't have to keep anyone in your life who treats you like crap, blood or not. A friend of mine teaches a cybersecurity class. Something to keep in mind is that your dad knows a lot of your security questions. First pet, cousin's names, favorite whatever. So either pick a security question he doesn't know the answers to, or answer with fake info that you can remember. Like, if the question is your middle school, and you were a fan of the Babysitter's Club, use Stony Brook Middle School. Or have a formula, like using the last word of the question, then the answer, then a phrase that you add to the end of all your questions. That means someone not only needs the answer, but the formula. And OP replies, Yes, I actually did this. I set up a new bank account to start transferring my money over, and I used fake answers for all of the security questions, since I realized he would know all of my answers. Please be aware, he may be actively monitoring your communication, such as email, or even telephone without your knowledge. Trust nothing, question everything. Maximus is King says, Not the a-hole. You need to go no contact. You need to do an audit of your passwords and codes, because clearly there is a pattern if he's able to get access. Change keywords from things he'd know, like your mother's maiden name. Explain to the bank why you want this done. You can even give numbers you want flagged in your account if they try to access it. Make sure you get a copy of your credit report. He knows your personal info like date of birth, social security, etc., and could be making credit cards in your name. Protect yourself proactively, not reactively, because your father has shown he does not care. OP replies, Really good advice, thank you. I didn't even think about him making credit cards in my name. I wish social security numbers were something you could get changed easily. I've opened a new bank account with a different bank, and am in the process of getting all of my money moved over. I felt so paranoid doing this, but I created fake answers to all of the security questions because I realized my dad would know the answer to virtually anything I pick. Good job. I want to add, freeze your credit. It's not hard for you to do or undo. Sorry for all of this crap. If only your dad wasn't a major jerk. You are not the a-hole if you want to remove yourself from him like your brother did. And OP replies, I didn't think about that either. That's a really smart idea, especially since going no contact will probably really piss him off. And now on to the update. So I got a lot of great advice from this sub and I wanted to thank everyone who took the time to respond. I ended up taking my computer into Geek Squad and they did find a keylogger on it. They removed the keylogger, and I spent some time picking a few files that I felt were safe to save, and wiped my hard drive. I'm set up now with a new bank account that has fake security question answers that are written down on a piece of paper and filed away. Now that my hard drive is wiped, I've also changed passwords on every account and set up two-factor authentication on every account where that is possible. Many of you advised against having a conversation with my father, but my brother and I ultimately decided that for the sake of our own closure, it was something that we needed. He of course denied everything, and while the conversation was frustrating to say the least, it also gave me the permission I needed to let go of him and go no contact. We've contacted the authorities about the bank account change, and we're in the process of opening an investigation. We made that clear to my father in the conversation as well, to hopefully dissuade any further intrusion attempts. My hard drive is clean, I've blocked his email address and phone number, and have deleted all old emails that could contain downloadable files and malware. This is going to be a long road in feeling like we're safe, but I think I'm finally heading in the right direction. Thanks again for everyone who commented on the original post. All of the advice was so, so helpful. And Lotus Fluor 01 replies, I'm glad you were able to get this under control. I would recommend you put a lock on your kid's credit information. 
It sounds like your father might be the type to take out credit in grandkids' names. Yes, I will definitely be doing this. Our first baby is still five-ish months away from being born, but once they are, I'll make sure that all gets frozen. It's good that you're working on freezing, but as a victim of identity theft multiple times myself, criminals, not family for me, I have a couple of additional suggestions that I've come across. Create an online account with both the IRS and Social Security Administration for you and your spouse. This will be complicated by the freeze that you have on your credit, so it will take a while. Since your credit is frozen, they will send a confirmation code via US mail to the last known address from your last tax return. Once you get that code, you can complete account setup. With the IRS account, you can get transcripts of the prior year tax returns. With the SSA account, you can sign up for benefits including disability. You don't want your father being able to do either of those things. In addition to the freezes in place at TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, add check systems to the list of agencies where you have a freeze. They are often used in association with banking, like checking and savings accounts. If you haven't yet, get at least one copy of your credit report from the free annual credit report website. Due to the pandemic, they are offering free weekly reports through April 2021, so don't wait. Look for anything you're unfamiliar with, but understand that some accounts don't show up the way you expect. For example, from when I had one, a Home Depot charge card used to show up as CBNA slash THD. If an account does not look familiar, the report should have enough information that you can track down the company that extended the credit and get more information. Good luck. Hascap2010 asks, why, why, why do some parents do this sort of thing? Do they think their adult children will just meekly go along with it? Do they want to lose all respect and contact with their children and grandchildren? And OP replies, I have no clue why. My dad is so narcissistic and definitely plays a lot of control games. On some level, I feel like he thought he wouldn't be caught and wouldn't be held accountable. It's really sad how it's all played out, but he won't ever get to meet his grandchildren now. Hopefully this will teach him some kind of life lesson that you can't go invading people's privacy like this. I'm not sure if you have social media, but make sure to never post pictures of this child or any future children. Yeah, we've been going back and forth on that one. I've blocked my dad on all social media, and I have my Instagram private, and my Facebook set so you can only view my profile and cover photos. I feel like we'd be safe to post pictures in that case, but maybe it still isn't? Definitely something we need to look more into. And our last comment by Cheerily Terrified says, I'm glad it's worked out as much as it can be. If going to see your father one more time was the right move for you, then it was the right move for you. And well done for actually going to the authorities. That's really brave and a positive step. Yeah, it was definitely scary reaching out to the authorities, but I'm glad I did it for sure. They've been so helpful, and it makes me feel one step closer to my father not being able to pull this again. I have to ask, how did he get access to your computer to put the keylogger on? That concerns me. He was the one who originally bought the computer for me. It's five years old, and I got it when I was still living at home, and before my parents were separated. Unreal. Not that I'm ever glad to hear about a person like this, but I'm glad you're safe. Do you have cameras for outside of your house? We did end up getting those camera doorbells installed on both the front and back doors. He's never been violent before, but we definitely didn't want to take chances either. He sounds like the kind of person to go through your garbage not get violent. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'd love to know your opinions on these ones today. As always, I do hope you've had a good day, night's sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye!